Today we're going to learn how to create this really cool signature page or signature sticker. You can either use this for a page in a book or you could use it as a sticker, print it out, and then stick it into books that you would have. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and open up our document. I'm just working with an eight by 10, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is go into my ellipse tool. If you don't see your ellipse tool, it's probably hiding underneath uh, the rectangle or rounded rectangle, so go down to ellipse. The keyboard shortcut for that is L, as you can see there. And we want to draw an ellipse without a fill here. So I have this red fill. I'm just gonna go ahead and swap it so that I have a red stroke and no fill. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and draw an ellipse. And I want that ellipse to be pretty big because this is gonna be the basis for uh, my design. So I'm gonna build my design around this circle. So I wanna make sure that this circle is perfectly aligned in the center of my document. So if I go up here to the top bar, and notice I'm in the Essentials Classic Workspace. If you're not in this, you'll wanna to go to Window, Workspace, and choose Essentials Classic. But while I'm here, I have my circle and I can see my alignment options here at the top. And I'm gonna click on this middle option for horizontal aligned center. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with my vertical option. And that looks pretty good. So now it's perfectly centered vertically and horizontally and I can go ahead and start to place some of these symbols that I've already drawn. Now, if you don't know how to uh, create hand-drawn symbols, I do have a video for that as well. Um, that you can watch before you get to this step. So uh, here are my hand-drawn symbols. I'm gonna just start off by placing some symbol instances onto uh, my document here. So to create a symbol instance, you are just going to click on the symbol that you want and then click on this little kind of angled arrow and that should place your symbol onto your page. I'm gonna do that with a couple more symbols here. All right, so once I have those there, I can go ahead and start scaling these. Now to get into your scale tool or get into your transform controls, you're going to hit E and then you can see a little bounding box pops up and I can hold my shift key down, always hold your shift key down and I can scale that symbol down and then kind of move it to the side. So I'm gonna do that with the rest of these and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so here I have my symbols and I have scaled most of these down so that they're quite a bit smaller and I may still go through and scale uh, them either up or down and kind of make some changes as I'm going along. I can also add some different symbol instances, so if I wanna add some more things in here, I can do that as I'm moving along, but at least I have a good a variety of things to start with here. Now the other thing that I've done is I've found two different symbols that kind of make sense to put in the center here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place these two symbols at the top center and bottom center, and then I'm going to work and it really doesn't matter here, but I'm gonna work along one side of this circle. So I'm gonna just try to create a design that goes from one of these bottom uh, symbols to the top along the side of this circle here. Uh, but what we wanna do is before we get started with this, we wanna make sure that our top and bottom symbols are centered. Uh, so again, once we have this here, I can go up to my top menu and hit a line and I want to align to my artboard, so make sure that you have that selected. And then I'm just going to horizontal align center. Same thing here with this bottom symbol, go to align and horizontally align it. And that's looking pretty good. So now I can go through and I can start to kind of think about how I want to place the rest of these symbols. And um, I can do things like if I hit V to get to my selection tool, I can select, then hit E and start rotating and positioning things. The other thing that I want to think about is with some of these things, some of these simple, really uh, kind of 
not very elaborate symbols, I may want to duplicate them. So if I want to duplicate this symbol, I'm just going to hold my option key down until I see those black and white arrows, then click and drag. And then I might want to, since I'm duplicating this, I could keep it the same, but that might look a little weird if I had it exactly the same. So I might want to go into some of my transform options. So when I'm selected in that object, I can go to object transform and I could also reflect it, which would flip it the opposite direction. And then if I did that, I could just rotate it back here. And now I have those kind of flipped on one side or the other. I can also go in and in these transform controls, I can stretch this up without my shift key being held down and then hold the shift key down and kind of scale it back down. So it just has kind of a different shape to it now than it did before. So you can do that with just a couple of them and then start kind of positioning them where you want so that they just have a little bit more variety to them. And pay attention to the fact that Sometimes if you have things overlapping, you might be able to see through those if there's no white. Um, so you might just have to kind of think about where you're putting them. One other thing you want to think about as you are setting these up is um, basically which objects are above and which objects are below the objects that you're placing them next to. And I'll kind of show you what I mean here. So as I'm positioning these two little stems, if I zoom in, I can see that the ends of those stems are over the cicada, and that looks a little weird. So I'd much rather have the cicada be over the top of the stems. So I can do that by just clicking on the cicada and pulling that to the top. And I can do that by going to Object, Arrange, and then Bring to Front. Notice that the keyboard shortcuts for that are Command, Shift, and then those closed brackets. So um, if I want to just bring it forward a little bit, it's Command Bracket, uh, Command Close Bracket, Send Backwards is Command Open Bracket, Send to Back is Command Shift Open Bracket. So, um, and I believe on a PC instead of Command it's Control, but otherwise it's the same. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead, Command Shift, Close Brackets, I can pull that all the way to the top and that's looking pretty good. And all of these symbols that you're arranging here, you want to arrange them in such a way where you can kind of hide endpoints like this and you can also kind of have them go along that arc of the circle. So if I'm looking at a symbol like this, um, this is a really nice one to use because it's already got this arc, but it's not going in the same direction as the arc that I'm working on over here. So again, I can just go up to Object Transform, Reflect, and then there I have that kind of more along this angle of my circle and I can just kind of position it like so. But basically all we're doing is just trying to create an interesting kind of uh, design that goes just along this side and thinking about that arrangement of those elements too in terms of bringing them forward and sending them back. Uh, so it's kind of like a puzzle and you're just going to keep working with these elements until you have something that you like. So I'm going to keep going and then I will come back to you here in just a little bit. I need to basically duplicate this design and switch it over to the other side. And the only two things that I'm not going to duplicate are my uh, butterfly up here at the top and then my um, cicada here down at the bottom. So what I need to do is go through and select all of the other pieces. Now an easy way to do this would just be to go ahead and draw a selection with your selection tool over the entire thing. And then hold your shift key down and select the things that you do not want to actually duplicate. So I'm going to go ahead and select my butterfly, my cicada, and then I'm also going to select the circle because I don't want to select, I don't want to duplicate that circle. So you can see here that everything else is actually selected. And before I actually duplicate that, I want to also group it 
because I have arranged these things uh, the way that I want them. So I don't want, when I duplicate this, uh, some of them coming forward or getting out of arrangement as I duplicate and move this over to the other side. So I'm going to hit Command G or Control G if you're on a PC. And you can see because that grouped them, that pulled kind of everything above my butterfly and my cicada, but I can fix that after this is done, so don't worry about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit Command C or Control C if you are on a PC to copy this, and then Command V to paste. Um, now we need to go ahead and flip this because we don't want two arcs this way, we want this to arc the other way. So we're gonna go to Object, Transform, Reflect and we want this to be a vertical reflection and because I'm previewing I can see that's exactly what I want and I'll hit OK and then I can just go ahead and drag this over holding the shift key down so that I get this snapped to that circle on the other side. Okay so now that I have these symbols organized in the way that I want them I need to send these designs to the back so that the butterfly and the cicada pop out to the front. I could also take the butterfly and the cicada and just pull them to the front. So either way you want to do this is fine. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and click on my designs here and send them to back, command shift, open brackets. And let me click on this side here, command shift, open brackets. And then that should send both of those things behind my butterfly and my cicada. And that's looking pretty good. So now the only thing that I don't like about this is that red line that's now going through this design. So now if I click on that circle, I can just hit delete and I'm left with this really cool, perfectly symmetrical design. Okay, so the only thing that we have left to do is to write this book belongs to and then put our line down below. So we're gonna go to our type tool and we're gonna draw a text box across here. And we wanna make sure that we go to paragraph and select the center alignment option if you have not. And then after you've done that, I want you to go up to your selection tool and make sure that this is still selected here and then go to align and make sure you have horizontal align center as well. All right, so now we're gonna go back to our type tool. We are going to click in here, hit Command A to select all of that. And then we're going to type this book belongs to. And you can have it, you know, lowercase, you know, however you wanna format this actual part is up to you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. You can just the size, the point size of your font up here. You can also do a command shift greater than sign and that should expand your uh, text up as well or control shift greater than if you are on a PC. I believe that's the keyboard shortcut. Find an interesting and fun uh, text for this. Find an interesting uh, font. It's kind of a fun font. That works too, I think I'm gonna stick with that. Um, try to find something that kind of goes with the quality of your design. Now the only thing is with some of these, see how my little colon there is not um, actually kind of in the same style. So kind of pay attention to that if that happens. I won't put a colon there, I'll just kind of leave it like this. All right, so now that we have this book belongs to, all we need is a line, and we're just gonna use our line segment tool. I'm gonna hold my shift key down and click and drag across. Once I have that there, I'm going to align it in the center of my uh, document by hitting this horizontal alignment option at the top of my uh, workspace here, and then I should be good. If you want to, you can go in, I'm gonna make that a little bit thinner, you can also go into your stroke options, and if you have this selected, you could put round caps on this so it's not so um, abrupt here at the ends. It's a little bit more rounded, uh, but that's up to you. So here you go. You have your own personalized signature page that you can do for your own coloring book if you're designing a coloring book, or you can even print these out and uh, make them into stickers and put them into your books. These are also great gifts if you wanted to create a design um, that could be colored and then give these with uh, colored pencils or something like that. So have fun creating with these signature pages.